Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today, I'm doing something different. This is not my normal opening, so I'm taking a couple days with the family over the holidays. So first of all, happy holidays to you and yours, and I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving or just wonderful day if you're in a different <laughs> country. But thanks so much for being here. So I am re-releasing some of my Patreon episodes. So we'll be deep diving Sex in the City, one of my favorite things to do. This one is season two, episode nine, Old Dogs, New Dicks. Remember, Carrie's trying to change big. Samantha, well, runs into Samantha. You'll understand when you see it. And Charlotte pursues that uncircumcised guy. Sit back, relax, enjoy. If you want to further support the show and see more stuff like this, check out my Patreon. It's patreon.com backslash real housewives recaps let's get into this episode and thanks for being here happy holidays hey guys welcome back to real housewives recaps today we're talking patreon we are on season two episode nine old dogs new dicks you guys this episode is considered very controversial and i will be breaking down the reasons why but when you look it up there's usually a trigger warning with this one so we'll be discussing that and some behind the scenes stuff going on and I can't wait to get into it. So let's jump right in. Old dogs, new dicks. Right off the bat, we get a voiceover of how New York women are the most beautiful in the world, which is why men spend all their time looking at them. So we see this guy here who walks out in front of a cab. So this guy and the cab driver are stunt performers, meaning they know what the heck they're doing. But what's interesting is they're actually stunt coordinators from the show. So Carrie in her voiceover says she's seeing big again. I just don't remember until watching these, you know, back to back like this. She says that at the beginning of every episode. She reminds us she's seeing big again. Yes, we know you're seeing big again. <laughs> Samantha and Carrie are together. Samantha is saying, listen, it's natural that men look at women. And you have to take him the way he is. You can't change him. So this episode is about changing and can people change? Can men change? Can women change them? Is it manip manipulation? That sort of thing. Same as saying no man is perfect. And if you pull at the wrong thread, it all falls apart. So I'm going to get more into this, but I just want to put it here that Carrie is especially annoying this episode. From the reminding us right out of the back, we're back together again, yes we know, to her being so neurotic, over the top, even more than normal in this one, and mad at Big because he can't read her mind. She won't tell him what's going on, and that she's frustrated with him looking at other women. Instead, she gets mad, and then we are going to get into the punch heard around the world coming up. Okay, so from here we go to Miranda. So she is now dating Steve. We got to see him for the first time last episode. She's, she's now calling him her boyfriend. He comes over and she's super tired. He ended up getting off even later. The bar was supposed to close at 2. He explains that he had these Japanese bankers in that really wanted these flaming drinks. One got sick, blah, blah, blah. She is completely exhausted. She bangs her toe. He rubs it. He's like the sweetest guy ever. He asks how her night was. She says, I don't know. I was asleep. Okay, so from here, we go to the next morning. The alarm goes off. She pops right up out of bed, and he's more into doing stuff in bed before they get up. So it's just about, again, the theme of this one is change. She's not used to his schedule. He's not used to her schedule. You know, the when you're in a relationship, especially when it's new and you're figuring all this stuff out. It's just about that. So I don't know. I found her a little annoying this episode too, but we'll get into that. Charlotte is dating Mike. Mike is played by Alex Draper. He was in Taken in Chicago Med. He's a feared restaurant critic. So they had a great date. They're back at her place. Things are going, you know, where they're going. She figures out, oh, he's not circumcised. So Again, remember I mentioned this episode is considered problematic and outdated. Problematic because, well, we'll talk about the punch, but also this view that they all had on the uncircumcised. Sam's the only one on board with it. Everybody else has a lot to say about it. A lot of people online are pissy about this because they just think it's just such an outdated view to have to be so... 
I don't know, anti-uncircumcised and that this grown man felt the need to get this done. Okay. So the gr- so they're talking about aesthetics and it's important to him, to Charlotte. Samantha says 85% of men are uncircumcised. Miranda says that she's happy she's only been with 15% of the population. Samantha says she slept with five guys that were uncircumcised. Charlotte wants to know out of how many. Carrie, very snarkily, says infinity. Biatch. Okay, Big and Carrie. Do you want more grappa? No, thank ya. That's just one of those annoying SJP things that I'm just not into. Like, look at how tiny and cute I am. Huh? No, thank ya. Okay. So she tries to tell him a story about her editor calling. He lights up a cigar. He's checking out other women. She's just not at all happy. He does this thing, and I actually understand this part where she's annoyed with him because he's kind of laying it on thick. He wants to smoke a cigar. The hostess says, no, 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 can't do that in here. He's like, but what if I get an okay from the other tables? And he schmoozes the other tables, buys some drinks, you know. He's just laying it on thick. So I understand why Carrie would be a little annoyed with this. I would be too. Like, dude, you can't wait five more minutes to walk, you know, walk outside and smoke your cigar. It's just kind of rude. But he's very arrogant and she calls him on it. So actually, nope. She, she's just annoyed with the looking thing, but it's what it's coming out as she's annoyed with him being arrogant. I think that's part of it too. She does call him on being arrogant, but she expects him to read her mind that she's pissed about the looking at other women thing. And that he's so schmoozy about it. And I don't, again, I just found her extra this episode. So she's writing about change. Is it easy? And uh, do you have to change your expectations? Can you change a man? That's the question that she asks the audience in this one. So then we go from here to Charlotte. She's had dinner with Mike. He kind of mentions coming up and she's like, oh, I have to get up early. My place, you know, she's trying to make excuses because of the whole uncircumcised thing. He seems deflected or defeated, I guess is the word, and um, says, listen, you're not the first woman to react like this. I've made up my mind. I'm going to get circumcised. Do you mind waiting? Well, this moves Charlotte to her core. She thinks he's doing it for her and that it means so much. She's like, yes, of course. And they kiss and it's very dramatic. And Charlotte, as usual, is building it all up in her head just to have it crashing down. Okay. Then we go to Steve and Miranda. They do their thing. She gets up afterwards and he's like, hey, it's Saturday. Slow down. And she is annoyed. She doesn't like not having like a time frame for how long the cuddling's going to last. And she likes to do spinning, dry cleaning, nails done, grocery shopping for the week, you know, that kind of thing on a, on a Saturday. So she's just struggling with his you know, let's just lay here kind of thing. I She's annoying, but I do kind of get what she's saying. But I get both sides. Like, it is kind of ridiculous to say, how long do you want to cuddle? But then again, I wouldn't want to spend forever in bed. Like, I like to go get shit done, too. So, I don't know. I see both sides there. So, from here, the girls go to Drag Queen Bingo. There's a funny what goof here where Samantha is rooting for N23 to be called, but that's not actually a thing. Uh, it's, it would be I 23 apparently didn't know that found that in my research. Okay. So Miranda's complaining about changing routines and why do women have to change? Never the guy. And Charlotte says, if you believe in the relationship, you need to work on it. And they they make fun of her. Like you just dumped a guy for being a Sharpe. And she says, Nope, we're still together tells them about the guy getting circumcised. Okay. At this point, Samantha uh, asks for a new bingo card and the person says, wait, Samantha? And we find out it is her, somebody she had dated named Brad. Okay. So if this uh, Samantha looks familiar, it's actually played by Hedda Lettuce who is a very well-known drag queen in the New York scene, been on RuPaul's Drag Race, very popular. And he goes by Samantha and says what imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. 
So then a woman in the background gets bingo. FYI, that woman is Amy Harris. She's actually a producer on the show. She also went on to produce Carrie Diaries. Okay, brace yourself for this because this is where things get rough. Two hours later, she was supposed to meet Big at his place. Two and a half hours later, he shows up. She says that she hates waiting for him and she throws a hissy fit. And he's like, don't be pissed. And she says, I'm pissed. His whole thing is, listen, you could have waited at a coffee shop around the corner. You didn't have to just stand here in the lobby. Her whole thing is, you should have been here on time. And she goes to walk off. He's like, no, come upstairs. She says, if you gave me a key, I wouldn't have to wait. He is not happy about that idea. That night, neither of them wanted to have sex. In the middle of the night, he accidentally knocks her off the bed. Well, we don't see it because it's dark, but she punches him in the face. And this is why people really react strongly to this episode. One of the reasons they, I mean, it's just wrong what she did, right? Like she reacts. It wasn't, it was an accident what he did. It was not an accident what she did. She just swung at him and it's awful. And she ends up hurting him and he's bleeding. And I, just think about if it was reversed, how awful, you know, we'd tell her to run away, get away from this guy. Don't ever be with somebody that hits you. And here she's, she hit him. It's just awful. Okay. So, uh, he gets mad, moves to the couch. Again, Carrie is just so unlikable in this one. She can't even let him have his space. She has to wake him back up, dripping ice on his head in the middle of the night. Um, she finally admits during the, again, she has to make it about herself. He's injured on the couch. She admits that he doesn't like that he looks at other women and that she doesn't have a key to his place. And feels like she's back in his life, but nothing has changed. So wholly unlikable, just completely in the wrong. I felt like through all of this and just the wrong time to do this. Okay. So the next night, Charlotte and Mike go out for a post-op scotch. So they, he still has to have time to heal. They start kissing. He gets excited and we just hear ow, ow, ow. So he has to go. He can't uh, get excited yet. Miranda decided to perform a 2 a.m. seduction on Steve. She drank five cups of coffee and is like buzzing when he gets there. And she brings him, uh, she says, okay, you go in the bedroom. I'll bring the wine. She brings it in and she finds him asleep. And this is where I think she was being a bitch. She's fallen asleep before. I understand that she made herself stay awake for him, but Instead of discussing it rationally with him, she just starts yelling at him when he's asleep. He's just gotten off work. He's exhausted. So they argue about times and windows. And she says she has a cuddle window. Like she doesn't like to have unlimited cuddle time. She's got crap to do. He's upset and says, listen, when you have a window of time, then give me a call. So uh, from there we go to Charlotte. She... It's been a week and it's time to test out Mike and see how it goes. He points out that this basically makes him a virgin again. And so they successfully do the deed. Well, after that, she assu she's made this assumption that he did this for her and that they're in a much more serious place. She talks to him about, you know, doing things on Saturday night and, do you want to stay in? Do you want to go out? That kind of thing. And he's like, oh, oh do we have plans? He, She, t again, bringing up staying and renting videos. And he says he's not ready for this to be a big thing. I don't want to be tied down right now. I want to get out there and share the whole new me. Take the doggy for a walk around the block. I mean, could he be more gross, right? So she never saw Mike again. And I'm saying good because he's like a dweeb. I don't find this guy the least bit attractive. Um... Okay, so Carrie. Carrie says she, you can change a man into not calling you, but then Big knocks. He has a black eye. I hate this so much because he comes chasing after her, and it's like she gets rewarded for her bad behavior and for her being a mess and for her being neurotic and then for hitting him in the head. Um, he explains that he's given out like five keys and never got them back. And 
you hog my bed and you eat oranges in bed. And I think I'm with him on this one. That's kind of gross. I mean, sorry, if you eat oranges in your bed, go for it. I wouldn't want it in my bed. I'm all for eating in the bed, but I'm not going to eat an orange in the bed. They're sticky and I just, I'm not into it. Um, but of course, Carrie has to be obnoxious and one of the final scenes, they're in bed and she's eating oranges. Big spent the night for the first time, again, rewarding her for a terrible behavior. Miranda wakes up at 2 a.m. The phone rings. Oh no, she's awake. Sorry. The phone rings at 2 a.m. and says, do me a favor, go to the window. And Steve shows her a blue moon. It's very rare and very beautiful. She says, come over when you're done, okay? So he comes over. They do it that night. They do it the next morning. And if you look closely, there is a boom microphone in that shot. Whoopsie. They kind of do that a lot. I remember watching that. I mean, I remember watching the original series and noticing boom mics. Some, sometimes it's kind of funny, but that's it for the episode. So again, a kind of a controversial one, right? Like when you look up reviews of this on IMDb, it's something that's brought up quite a bit. Carrie punching big and the outdated view of circumcision. So interesting. But still fun to cover. I enjoy watching these and reliving them and going back through all the details that I may have missed at the time. And yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this recap. I hope you have a fantastic day and I will talk to you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.